Today's topic is fins. Every aerodynamically stabilized rocket has them, and the design of the fins can affect the performance, the stability, and the overall aesthetics of the rocket. So it's a pretty important piece. Now, like nose cones, fins can be um, difficult to design uh, using uh, conventional interactive CAD techniques, but very simple to design using programs. Uh, not every modeler has the ability to program, which is the point of this workbench. We've done that programming for you and made the uh, design simple. Okay, so let's start by creating a fin by selecting the fin icon. Now, in terms of types of fins, the only type that's currently supported is trapezoid. That list will expand as the development of the rocket workbench uh, improves. So I'm going to switch to the front view and review some of the basic uh, measurements that we apply to a, a fin. Okay, so the part that attaches to the rocket is called the root, and the length of that is known as the root cord. Okay, so we have the cord for the root section shown here. We have a leading edge, a trailing edge, and we also have a tip cord. And we can define the length of the tip cord here. Now we can see that the leading edge of this is um, not a vertical line. So this is referred to as a sweep. And we can set the sweep using one of two methods. One is to set the sweep angle, where a zero degree angle is vertical. Okay, so this is a zero sweep leading edge. You can also set it by using distance. So in the case of distance, it is the distance between the leading edge of the root cord and the leading edge of the tip cord. It's currently set to zero. Let's set that to five. Okay, now we can see that when we change one of those parameters, we automatically affect the other. Okay, so let's change the sweep to 30 degrees and we can see that our length has been adjusted accordingly. Now the trailing edge is uh, dictated by um, the leading edge sweep, the root cord, and the tip cord. Okay, so again we can see that the root and the tip cords are set independently. Okay, so let's go back to the isometric view. And now we're going to discuss thickness. So the thickness for the root and the tip can be set independently. Right now they're both set the same at two millimeters, but I'm going to change that so that we have a tapered fin. So in this case, it starts at two millimeters at the root and ends at one millimeter at the tip. Okay. So that's actually one shape that would be very difficult to draw using interactive CAD techniques. But there's more to it than that. We can see the cross section up here. The uh, leading and trailing edges are both square. So if you just cut this out of plywood, for example, that's the shape you're going to get. But we can do other shapes. Okay, so we'll start from the tip since we see that first. And actually I'll make the root match. In this case, we have rounded leading and trailing edges. Okay, now this is interesting for a few reasons. Let's go back to square at the root. The way this is implemented internally is we draw the shape of the root and we draw the shape of the tip and we do a loft action to go from one to the other. So it doesn't make sense in all cases. Okay, so where the root is round and the tip is square, you can see we're rounded and then we become less and less rounded until we get the square part. Okay, now if we look at it from the front, um, the cross, the, the view from the front has not changed. There have been no changes in those dimensions. Okay. Typically, you're going to see um, the most consistent results when you have the uh, root and the tip in the same cross section, but there's no restriction on doing so. 
Uh, it's just some combinations aren't going to make a lot of sense. So let's look at the next one, airfoil. Okay, so this is one where actually dissimilar root and tips make sense. We have a rounded root and an airfoil tip. The airfoil we're using is the NACA symmetric airfoil, which is explained in the online documentation. We scroll down and look at cross sections. Uh, we show the NACA airfoil and we have a link to the Wikipedia page that gives you all the math that you require to generate the NACA airfoil. But of course, we're doing that so you don't have to. Next on the list, we have a wedge. So I'm going to make it the same for both. Okay, so the wedge is basically a triangle, which is square at the trailing edge and pointed at the leading edge. Now, this particular shape in particular is uh, very difficult to draw using conventional CAD techniques. And what makes it difficult is the difference between uh, the root thickness and the tip thickness. If that were consistent all the way through, it'd be very simple to create, but uh, where it tapers from root to tip, that's uh, quite difficult. Okay, diamond. So the diamond is a diamond shape, um, but we um, actually have a control parameter to determine where along the cord that that diamond uh, reaches its maximum. Okay, and we use the uh, length one parameter for this. Now we can do that as either a percentage or an actual length. So I'm going to set that at 50%, which is what we typically think of as the diamond. And you can see it applies here. And I can do that at both the uh, root and the tip. But there's no reason why we can't have a diamond that, uh, um, you know, is a little bit asymmetrical along its length. Leading edge taper. So there's a few ways you can do this. In this case, we have it as a, as a percentage. It's similar to the diamond. Um, in this case, we're doing 50% from four to uh, from root to tip. Um, but we can do that as either a percentage, in which case it would be longer at the root and shorter at the tip. Or we can set it to a fixed value. Okay, so I'm not going to use a percentage. I'm going to say, um, yeah, this will be five millimeters along the whole length. Okay, and that case was invalid, so let's make it smaller at three. Okay, so if you're creating this taper with your router, this is typically how you're going to do it. It's going to be of a constant width along the leading edge. Okay. I'm going to set this back to uh, a reasonable value for uh, 300% taper doesn't produce a good uh, leading edge. Okay. We can do a taper on the trailing edge. Okay. So similar to the leading edge taper, except in this case, the leading edge is square and it is the trailing edge that is tapered to a point. And we can taper at both ends. So the last major feature is what's known as a through the wall tab. Okay, so if we look at the documentation, through the wall tabs is a common technique in high power rocketry that adds extra strength to um, both the fins and the body tube. Okay. And what happens is, in addition to the fin, we have a tab that extends through the outer body tube and attaches to something inside, typically the motor mount. Okay, So this gives you um, more attach points. So one without through the wall just is basically glued at the base of the fin. And under aerodynamic pressure, that can um, rip off as you exceed uh, certain speeds. But by extending that through, we attach at the uh, body tube, the outer body tube, as well as the 
inner body tube or motor mount in, in this case. We can also add support fillets at the uh, attachment point for the uh, motor mount inside the outer body tube and what you would conventionally see at the root of the fin on the outside of the body tube. Okay, so this is a very simple way to give your rocket a lot of extra strength. Okay, so to create those, we select Create Through the Wall tab. Now let's fit it in our screen. And we see we create a tab at the bottom of the rocket. Okay, now that tab is basically a rectangular tab, and we can control the size. So the offset, if we look at from the front, is the distance between the uh, leading edge of the root and um, the tab. The length of the tab is from the leading edge of the tab to the trailing edge of the tab. The height is from the root of the fin to the base of the tab. And the thickness, if we go back to the isometric view, is the thickness of the tab. Now the thickness of your tab, for example, can be wider than um, the thickness of your fin. It's going to extend inside of the body tube and is not going to interfere either from an aerodynamic or visual point of view. So those are fins.